Hello and welcome to the session in which we will discuss the concept of common size financial statements. Now what are financial statements? Income statement, balance sheet, statement of cash flows. What we are going to do, we are going to create common size financial statements. So we're going to learn what is that, why do we prepare common size financial statement, and how do we benefit? What is the business? What are the business implications of preparing common size financial statement? So a common size financial statement is a standardized version of the financial statement in which each line item is expressed as a percentage of a base figure. So what we are going to do is look at the income statement, look at the balance sheet, and express all the figures as percentages on these financial statement and we will select a figure for example for the income statement we would select revenue as the base figure and we compare everything to revenue on the balance sheet we would select a figure for example asset and we will compare everything to asset to figure out what do they represent as a percentage of asset now why do we do that what's the main purpose of this the main purpose is to facilitate comparison by eliminating the effect of size and scale so let me give you a simple example before we dive a little bit more to show you what do I mean by eliminating the size and the scale let's assume we are looking at two retailer retailer a and retailer B retailer a they have sales revenue of 10 million dollars retailer B they have revenues of 1 million so notice retailer a revenue is 10 times B retailer this is revenue or sales now let's take a look at cost of goods sold cost of goods sold for retailer a is let's make it 60 uh, not 66 million so retailer a their cost of sales is 6 million therefore their gross profit is 4 million retailer B their cost of sales is 300,000 and their gross profit is 700,000 now at first you would say which company is doing better you would say well company a they have 10 million in revenues versus company B true but when when we take a look at their common size so let's turn everything into a percentage cost of goods sold for company a represents 60 percent of sales so sales or revenues is 100 percent we're comparing everything to revenue cost of sales represent 40 percent and gross profit 4 million divided by what we're doing is we're dividing 6 million by 10 million and 4 million divided by 10 million which is the base figure which is 40 percent if we'll do the same thing for company B company B cost of goods sold is 70 percent I'm sorry cost of goods sold is 30 percent and their gross profit is 70 percent well what does that tell us it tells us this that company B is making more profit per dollar amount more gross profit company B for every dollar in sales they are generating 70 percent in gross profit versus company A they're only generating 40 percent now in the real world if you're comparing two retailers I made the difference so obvious but in the real world the difference cannot be 30 percent reality will kick in and company B cannot be making that much profit comparing they're in the same industry as company A and company B but I made it so obvious so you can see the difference or the gross profit could be for one company 52 percent for the other company could be 55 percent you would see that company B has higher gross profit so what happened with percentages we don't care about the size of the sales we don't care about the size of the companies company A size sales is 10 times but we factored out the size to make this comparison uh, more relevant to us to make this comparison more relative to us more relevant to us there are mo ma two main types of common size uh, one is the income statement representing everything for on the income statement as a percentage of sales or net sales and on the balance sheet we look at everything as a percentage of total asset so we're going to look at the purpose of the common size what we're going to dive a little bit more into it why do we use this how do we compute the common size which is 
pretty straightforward obviously we would look at an example and through that example we would look at the business implication and at the end we would look at an MCQ from Farhat lectures to test our knowledge or to consolidate what we just learned let's go ahead and get started before we proceed any further I have a public announcement about my company farhatlectures.com Farhat Accounting Lectures is a supplemental educational tool that's going to help you with your CPA exam preparation as well as your accounting courses. My CPA material is aligned with your CPA review course such as Becker, Roger, Wiley, Gleam, Miles. My accounting courses are aligned with your accounting courses broken down by chapter and topics. My resources consist of lectures, multiple choice questions, true false questions as well as exercises. Go ahead, start your free trial today. First, the purpose of the common size financial statement, as I mentioned, it helps with comparison. So enable comparison across companies of different sizes by standardizing the data, turning the data into percentages. It facilitates analysis over multiple periods. Now, it's not only you could look at the percentages, you could look at percentages for a particular company over several years to evaluate how the changes is occurring in that company. For example, a small retail chain compare its income statement to that of national competitors to see how well they are doing from a cost of goods sold, from a gross profit, from operating expenses. By using common size, they discovered that cost of goods sold is 65% of sales, while competitors is 58 Well, what does that mean? It means they have inefficiencies in purchasing or pricing because their cost of goods sold is way higher than the competitor. That's all what we can say about this. So that's all we can say. We can say that cost of goods sold at our company is higher than the average. Vertical analysis. Provide insight relative weight of each amount. Vertical. We're going vertically. What's that going to, going to do? It's going to help us assess how our resources are allocated. For example, in the... Uh, in the uh, in the balance sheet, how much total asset are in cash, how much in an inventory, so on and so forth. Just tell us how we are allocating our resources. For example, an analyst reviewing a manufacturer balance sheet sees that 30% of total asset are tied up in inventory. What does that mean? Well, this signal, it could see that we have too much inventory if the average in the industry, they hold 20% in inventory. So it's going to tell management, look, you are holding, relatively speaking, more inventory as, as part of your total asset than the, than the industry. So that's another purpose of it. Another purpose of it is efficiency and cost control. It allows analysts to identify high or growing expenses. For example, if you have rising, selling, general, and administrative as a percentage of sales, it will highlight that. It will highlight areas of operational as if inefficiencies or cost savings. For example, if you're a CFO or you're in charge of a company, you might notice that selling general and administrative increase from 12 to 18% relative to sales over two years. Well, this is going to trigger internal audit to assess whether marketing or administrative costs are becoming more excessive or if sales went down relative to those amount or those expenses are rising faster than revenue and to find out why strategic decision making we could use this information to benchmark performance against competitor or industry averages and this is important when we benchmark i'll tell you about my experience my actual experience how we used common size financial statement in the real world when i was in practice for example before you perform an audit before you perform a review what you will do is you will turn the numbers into percentages to highlight any deficiencies or any deviation or any abnormality from expectation so you benchmark against certain performance also investors and creditors use use it to assess profitability solvency and financial stability also if you're analyzing a company you want to know two firms that have R&D, for example, one firm invests 20% of their sales in an R&D and the other invests 5%. Well, what does that mean? It means the firm that's investing 20%, they are interested more in the research. The signals that the first firm is more focused on innovation. And because of that, it might influence your decision to invest with them. 
Also, common size financial statement will improve communication. It makes financial statement information easier to understand for stakeholders with varying level of literacy. Now, bear in mind that by looking, if I, in my class, in my advanced MBA classes, when I teach them, part of this common size financial statement, I give students three, three financial statements. And I give them three balance sheet, all common size, all percentages. And part of the assignments is for them to figure out which balance sheet is which company. I give them three different companies and three balance sheet. And I don't give them any numbers. I give them percentages. For example, they would know, for example, company one is Walmart. Company two is Apple Computers. Uh, company three uh, could be Amazon. How would they know this? Once you understand percentages, once you understand the capital structure of the company, then you, you can figure out it's easier to understand the company. Also, for improved communication, Startup presents its common financial statement to potential users, so they show them each expense category as a percentage of sales to communicate where the funds are going. So this way, the users of the financial statements would understand it better. Now, what we're going to do, we're going to look at common size financial statement. I'm going to show you how to compute this and we're going to look at a few highlights to understand the business implication of each of these accounts. For example, I'm going to first compute the change in cash. I'm going to tell you why. what's the business implication of that. Now let's take a look at this question from farhatlectures.com. A company's common size income statement shows that its selling general and administrative expenses increased from 8 to 12% of sales. While the gross margin remained unchanged, so the gross profit remained unchanged. What should management infer or investors or users or auditors, what should we infer from this trend? If we see this trend, what can we say about this trend? Well, can we say rising production costs are eroding profitability? Um, we can't say that. Why not? Because production cost deals with gross margin and gross margin remain unchanged. The problem is not gross margin here because it remain unchanged. So we can get this one out. Operating efficiency has improved. When do you improve operating efficiency? You improve operating efficiency when your expenses are growing at a slower rate than revenue or your expenses are going down relative to revenue. That's not what's happening here. We are not improving operating efficiency. Overhead expenses are rising faster than revenue. Yes, here what we're saying is our overhead expenses to run the company, selling general and administrative, are rising faster than sales because they used to be 8% of sales. Now they're 12% of sales. They, they represent a larger portion of sales. Whether sales stay the same or sales increase, those expenses are growing at a faster rate. That we can say that are, ras are rising at a faster rate. Let's look at D anyway. D, the company's interest obligation has increased. Interest is a separate line on the income statement. It's very important. It's a financing cost. We are not told anything about interest. Hopefully you, you would not select this answer. So the answer choice will be C. What should you do now? You want to look at additional lectures, additional resources, additional multiple choice. This is where you go to farhatlectures.com to look at additional resources. Invest in yourself. Good luck and stay safe.